in the eyes of Western political or business elite, have they completely lost hope that China is going to shift its ideology and to be sort of be more aligned with the Western liberal democratic ideologies? Have they completely lost hope? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs>
conversation is still really stuck in the 20th century, um, stuck in the Cold War, you know, kind of stuck in the contest between democracy and autocracy. Chinese modernization. The more I think about it, the more I feel like this is an important, an important shift, you know, not just in language, but in, in, in framing of kind of the stage of where China's development is today and, and the kind of issues and opportunities that it presents to China in the world. This, this shift in language from, from sort of um, development to modernization. And I think it's interesting to play with the idea that if there is going to be a contest in the 21st century, it's probably more going to be a contest between different visions or different versions of modernity, of, of, of maybe, you know, uh, the advanced liberal democracies version of modernity and, and you know, how, how China's top leaders see their vision for modernity and, and the contest between those. Um, I can't remember in some of the interviews that we did last year um, who made what I thought was a really great point, which is that if you add up the populations of all the advanced liberal democracies, it's about 1.1 billion people. And you know, China being 1.4 billion people means that you know, just with China's version of modernity alone, there is the opportunity here to define what modernity means, what the experience of modernity is for the majority of humanity that experiences it, and how it's going to be a distinctive vision from uh, Western modernity. And, and four things keep coming up for me in, in the stuff that I'm reading. Uh, you know, one is that it's going to be more equitable with a, a smaller gap between sort of prosperity and poverty. Uh, two, it's going to be uh, less materialistic, so spiritual civilization. And, you know, there, there is something interesting in that concept. I, I think of it as maybe different, different Maslow hierarchy of needs. And if the classic Maslow hierarchy of needs uh, ends with self-actualization, uh, with individual freedom, then the, this alternative modernity, this spiritual civilization, imagines a kind of like a, a, a mass actualization, that, that we figure out a, a better way of living together. So, so less materialistic, um, more in harmony with nature, and, and a more peaceful rise somehow. So, you know, uh, a, a, clear, a clearly different pathway than the kind of colonialism and war that, that led to the development of, of a, lot of, uh, a lot of Western countries. I look out there in the world and in popular media on both sides, you know, really setting up a contest for the future. You know, your version of modernity, our vision for modernity. Um, when, in fact, there's so much opportunity for cooperation. Because actually, fundamentally, there are, you know, we've identified similar needs, similar things that, um, that, that for you know, both of our societies, all of our societies to improve, these are the things that, um, that we need to be working on. Um, and so when you talk about bridge building, you know, setting geopolitics aside, I mean, I think that there could be no more productive area for cooperation than sort of exploring together what is the better society that we are both trying to build um, and learning, for one, learning from each other. You know, business has always played an important role in, in sort of leading the way towards building bridges. Um, you know, those are often the opportunities that, that lead us to, you know, it gives us the best reason to learn to understand um, one another. And, you know, I think in the past couple years, we've, we've been clearly reminded that, you know, business thrives when the global context is stable and predictable. And, and a lot of business has struggled, a lot of investment has kind of been locked up because of there's just so much uncertainty. Um, so I think that, you know, business looking for opportunities to, to provide more stability and predictability is going to, 
benefit all of us. Thank you.